Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to our KW Technology Community Weekly Webinar. Today is Friday, August 26th. So thank you all so much for being here today. As you can see, we have four items on the agenda. The first one is um, a topic that was talked about at the uh, MC Tech Ambassador Session at Megacamp, an innovation technology roadmap. So I'm going to give you updates on that. Then we're going to spend a good amount of time today talking about Profit Dash. We have a new feature uh, that is in place and a few more new features that are on the roadmap. So that is one um, area of the roadmap that we'll look at today, what's coming with Profit Dash next. Um, then we're asking a favor of you, and that's to help KW, specifically our Chief Innovation Officer, Josh Team, have a presence at the big South by Southwest Interactive Conference next year. And then we will close with upcoming events and something fun at the end, as always. So without further ado, let's dive in. And um, I will let you know that we are expecting a guest speaker uh, a little bit later in the webinar. We are going to be joined by Raj Baskar. He is the CEO and co-founder of Hurdler. And Hurdler is the company that we've partnered with to bring you Profit Dash. So you'll get to hear directly from Raj and uh, ask him questions directly. All right. So let's start as promised, talking about an innovation technology roadmap. So the overwhelming need that we realize all of you need is insight into what's coming on the roadmap. Um, you know, we, we have been uh, in the habit of releasing products at the major events, every mega camp, every family reunion, you can count on that. But we would like you, and we know you need it, to know a little bit more in advance um, as to what's coming. So, we want to make sure that we give that to you in um, a way that's easy to digest. And what we're doing here behind the scenes, a little bit of transparency into our inner workings, is that, um, as you know, we have a new chief technology officer who you met at Megacamp if you were there, Steve Peterschmidt. Um, and he is getting our organization aligned to deliver on uh, the connected platform that we have set out to build. With that, we have some new systems in place here internally, and one of them is a tool called AHA. It is an incredible tool for product development and what it will do. So we will use it internally to keep track of products, um, what the features are on the roadmap, when they're due, what the status is, who's working on them. All of that is in this one big system. And then what it can do is produce outwardly facing documents, including roadmaps. So what I'm just going to show you here, these are examples of what these roadmaps will look like. And we just love your comments on, you're going to see three different kinds, which one or if all three look like uh, they'd be useful to you. But again, this is to help you have, uh, you know, firsthand knowledge on what's coming down the pipe so you can be prepared in your market center with changes or new features to products. So this example, this is not a real KW product roadmap, this is just an example of what AHA can produce. And this particular one is called a portfolio roadmap. So what it does is when you've got multiple products like we do, um, each of these swim lanes, if you will, here's one, this is a fictitious company called Fredwin, they have a cycling and a running division. So for each of those divisions, you can see the different uh, projects or products that they're working on and then quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, where uh, where they are with releases um, for each of those initiatives for the products. So that's one type of roadmap. What's really cool about AHA is we can um, output various roadmaps. We can have several. So the one that you like the most um, can be the one that you use. Another one is called a releases roadmap and what this one does is just shows you the phases and the milestones of releases. So this would be based on a date and then you can see what's in each release. And the third type of roadmap that this produces is called a uh, features roadmap. And so this one allows you to see 
details on each of the features that are um, in the pipeline to be worked on, what the goals are for each one, what initiatives these features support, and the status of each one. So again, this is a tool that's relatively new here. We're still implementing it, but we've really started to use it um, pretty deeply for Profit Dash, and that is why I have um, some features that I am able to share with you today. So once we have other product information and dates that we are confident in into this tool, then we'll be able to start producing roadmaps and they actually can be published as HTML files or even PDFs and that's the way we can give those to you. And what's cool is when we publish them as HTML files and we have a place for them to live, again, we're working towards building you guys an exclusive community within KW Connect that only people with the ambassador designation can see, then that is where an HTML page containing a roadmap would live. So any comments or reactions to this, but just love to hear it um, by typing a note into the questions field if this is something that um, looks like it'll be enjoyable and useful for you. And just don't forget that you can send your agents, and you can go here too, to find out uh, what information we do have currently on all of our products by going to KW Connect and click on resources. There will be a technology menu that pops up, and when you click on that, uh, it'll take you to a landing page where you can scroll down, and then you've got a nice technology landing page. There's a little icon for each one of our technology products there, and when you click on each product, then you get a whole landing page. Um, everything you need to know about that product, everything from the elevator pitch, the value proposition that can be used for recruiting, um, to the features, to the benefits, and then any of the technology training videos that our team has created and FAQs. So these landing pages too um, can start to be built out to have um, more ambassador specific information as well. Okay, um, a lot of you are liking the second view of the roadmap and again what's cool about this AHA tool is that we can create now I'm getting real technical, um, it's called a notebook in AHA, and that notebook can contain multiple roadmaps. So you're able to slice and dice and look at the same information, but in different views. So you'll have the flexibility to look at um, the roadmaps that make the most sense to you. So um, thank you for your patience as we get this rolled out, but this has been a long time coming, and I know that this is going to be hugely valuable to all of you. So, and again, I do um, hope you're enjoying this landing page. I think this makes it much easier now for you to find the, quote, official uh, information on each one of our tech products and links to training. Okay, so next let's talk about Profit Dash. I'm still waiting for Raj to join. Um, in the meantime, I wanted to share with you that um, you, you asked for a value proposition for each one of our tools that you can use internally in your market center to talk about them with either current agents or to help out with recruiting. So this kind of summarizes um, not just what the features and benefits are of Profit Dash, but why it's unique to Keller Williams, what the value um, of this app is for Keller Williams agents. So some of the things that only KW agents have is that because it syncs with our Keller Williams systems, you log into Profit Dash with your single sign-on. Because of that, we're able to have the Profit Dash app talk to our financial systems. And so um, in the future, well, you'll see some future roadmap items where you'll see more evidence of that, um, but you are getting your actual profit and commissions broken down by listings. Um, and then of course, other things you can do with this app includes managing expenses and deductions, tracking mileage, you can know your taxes, and it syncs with your cloud. So what's brand new as of this week in the Profit Dash app is the fact that it now displays profit share. 
So the screen on the left shows that you tap the finances icon at the bottom of the screen. And when you go to the finances screen on the right, when you go into the income tab, uh, now you'll see KW profit share. If you've gotten any disbursements this tax year, then they're all going to be listed there and that gets rolled into your total income. So again, just one more step in the process of creating this truly connected platform where we don't just have a lot of great products, but they talk with each other and most importantly, they talk with our financial system. So if you did not check that out yet, please take a look. Okay. And what's coming on the roadmap then for Profit Dash? Um, no exact dates yet, but what we can tell you is that very soon on the roadmap, and these are actually listed in order of priority, um, the next thing we're working on with Profit Dash is to have that integrated with CGI. So you know the CGI calculator, once an agent goes in and completes their CGI calculator and figures out um, what they need to do to, to achieve their goals and all of those numbers populate on that agent's CGI dashboard, the information from that dashboard, including the goals, those are going to push to Profit Dash. Um, so again, just another integration point between the two tools, making it even more uniquely valuable for Keller Williams agents. Uh, the second item is that we want to extend Profit Dash to Canada. So working on that and also have a uh, Profit Dash app that teams can use. Okay. So with that, we do have Raj who has joined and let me uh, bring him on here. Raj, could you say hello? Hello everyone, hi Brenda, thanks for having me on board. Hi Raj, you sound great. Can everybody hear Raj? If so, just uh, type in a note or raise your hand. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here, Raj. We really appreciate your time. I know that we have a lot of our tech ambassadors who are um, glad to hear directly from you and uh, we'll have a chance to ask you some questions. Um, but Raj, what I wanted to ask first is just if you could just take a few minutes and just introduce yourself, talk about yourself um, and how Hurdler came to be, uh, both the organization, the app, and then how that evolved into Profit Dash. Sure. Um, so I uh, um, so founded Hurdler, co-founded Hurdler uh, about four or five years ago, um, and the original. Uh, vision was to help any entrepreneur uh, manage and track all of their business finances. Uh, and we say entrepreneur because there are a lot of solo entrepreneurs or solopreneurs out there running their own businesses, but don't, you know, we didn't think they had the, the optimal tools uh, to do that from the financing side. So we viewed uh, old school accounting systems as either too much or just not built for um, on-the-go, fast-moving entrepreneurs. And so we set out to start building that years ago um, because building a financial system isn't easy and you have to, you really do have to connect all the dots to make, make it worthwhile, um, which really is the culmination of Profit Dash because we wanted to put something out there that literally connected all the dots so you don't have to do so much data entry, right? So it can free up your time to do like lead gen, something that actually adds value to your business. Um, and so a little more background on myself, I had a real estate, um, real estate management platform, uh, software platform from 2000 to 2010, a company called Visual Homes, and we were focused on affordable housing. And as rental management, uh, most of our clients were um, public and affordable housing agencies all around the country. I built that up to manage about a half a million units, rental units on the platform. Uh, we had a couple million residents. We were processing around 200 million in monthly rental payments uh, for subsidized housing. And market rate, it would have been a billion. Um, and, but the point being, it was a, a large financial platform. And to have uh, understanding around that as well as compliance. Um, so here where we're maybe dealing with like IRS reporting, compliance is pretty important. Um, and that was kind of my background, and my company was acquired by Yardi Systems um, 
back in 2010, six years ago, and Yardi has half of all U.S. apartment buildings using their software. Um, it's an excellent partner, and it's six years later, and all of my customers and employees are still there. Um, and I, I like to share that that one little tidbit because to me that's very important. That I usually like to build long-term value. Um, so we're not building a house of cards here. We're building something to last and something that lives on its own and keeps creating value. Um, and that's something that, so we put out Profit Dash, we launched it um, at Megacamp, and if you've already been using it, you've probably seen there's been updates already, and that's something we're continuing to do. Like That'll just continue on for the rest of life. Um, that's something that excites us. So we have, I'm proud to have an in-app chat feature. Um, where you can actually, users can actually just tap in the upper left hand corner, it's a chat bubble with a question mark, and they can chat with our team. Um, and that is really a direct connection with users, um, and it's important because we can help users, but we can also be engaged with users and see how it needs to evolve, uh, evolve over time and how we need to re keep on refining it to reduce the amount of time agents spend on their finances so they can spend more time growing their business. Okay, thank you so much. And I'm um, getting a lot of comments about um, how much everyone is loving the app and uh, the support that's built in. Yeah, that's been a thing, like, uh, for me personally, um, you know, I always say I'm the same person inside my house as when I walk out the front door. So I'm a guy who I only have one set of values, it's my personal values, and I apply those personal values to anything we do in life, including business. I don't have a separate set of business values. So if you ever see us doing anything that doesn't resonate with you, like, please call me out on the in-app chat and <laughs> share that with me because it's likely not intentional at all. Like, um, it's just not, we want it, we're good people and I spend a lot of time on that. I, I hang out in the app chat. I read everything there. Um, we have a good sized team and we, we keep on building that up, but customer success is like a large part. And I talk about that like daily here. We want to we wanna make sure everyone's being successful with it and we're doing right by everyone as well. It's something like, you know, like, like Red Day resonates with us. Like that's, it's just a big thing. Like those kind of things, like that's how we want to carry ourselves in general. Um, and so anyway, uh, I just like to share like some of the personal stuff too, because for me, um, everything is personal in a positive way. Like it doesn't. When people say don't take it personally, like I do take it personally, and I like <laughs> taking it personally. Like that's. I feel like everything should be taken personally. It's it's hard not to yes. And um, as as you're talking, as I'm thinking, a few people are commenting the same thing. Your your company and. Keller Williams are such a good fit just because of those cultural values that are are just there, and um, that's that's very exciting. And we're off to a really great start partnering with you. Um, so I guess you heard my uh, pitch, if you will, for for the app. It, do you have any um, any more to say about how you might summarize again the the audience that we have on this call? We have our technology ambassadors, some of whom are also. MC Tech coordinators in their market center, and they really are the go-to people for all things technology. They are expected to not only know how things work, um, but but why should agents care? Um, so, do you have your your own maybe 30-second elevator elevator pitch for um, the Profit Dash app for KW, the value of that for KW agents, and then we'll move definitely. Into Sure. After that. <laughs> okay. Sure. I mean, it's so you you know you have to know your numbers if you're going to build a, a real business. Um, even if it's a business of one, you got to know your numbers. Um, and especially for independent agents, they need to know their tax obligations. And we call it true profit. So it's your earnings minus your expenses minus your taxes is what you actually get to keep at the end of the day. So you should always know what that really is and how you're really spending your time. What we try to do with Profit Dash, I mean, it can't get any easier than just downloading it. The only way you can get into it is logging in with your Keller Williams ID. That's literally the hardest part <laughs> of using the app, like remembering your KW ID. But that's what I've seen so far, anyway. And so once once you get in, I mean, it pulls all your listings and commissions back to January one. Um, if you have a business credit card, you just sync that, and now you just move forward. Um, and it's 
it's easy. Um, and the parts that if anyone finds something that's not easy, I mean, we need to refine that and keep on refining it. But the whole point is for it to be easy. Um, and a lot of folks have been asking us if we have a desktop, and we don't have a desktop version yet. We only have mobile version because we wanted to perfect it on mobile and really leverage, like, you know, your GPS for mileage tracking and other things. We're really just holistic and connecting all the dots, so you don't need, you know, multiple apps. You know, there's mileage trackers out there. There's, there's finance apps. There's, you know, you have your KWLS. You have all these places that have all this data, but we wanted to nail it with one app that connects all the dots. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So a couple of questions have come in since you have been speaking. Um, one of them is uh, there's some concerns about the privacy and the protection of the information. So uh, one question is who has access to the private information we are entering into the app? Um, just from that question face value, I, I, I'm wondering if that's if the person asking it, do you mean um, things that are coming in from your bank? Um, but, but Raj, do you have an answer to that? Who can see each user's private information? Sure. Um, I'll try to tackle that. That's okay. A, it's a big question. Big question. Uh, and so different aspects. So like, for example, in our app, you can sync uh, your credit card or bank account. Um, and when you do that, we're using a uh, uh, it's secure uh, OAuth login to the banks where um, you, when you're logging in, it's like logging into like straight to your bank account over the web. So it's no different than that. Um, so we don't actually, we being like Profit Dash doesn't actually get your credentials. Of course, we don't even want your credentials for that. And then when it does, it's it's just read only access to that data. Um, so that's another uh, another protection there. Um, so it can't actually do any bank transactions, um, and it's just to pull in that info. The purpose is to really just to consume that data to maximize your deductions and, and tally up your finances for you. Um, other data uh, in there, it's it's all done according with our our privacy and terms and conditions. But your data isn't shared with anyone. Um, uh, I don't even think it goes back to KW. Um, so it's uh, it's it's fairly straightforward, um, yeah, and it's it's it's. I think you're the only one who really has access to your private data. And you can sync that data with your if you have a Dropbox or Drive account too. Is that exactly right? Yeah, that's, that's a good. Place to go. <laughs> yeah, it's a good. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. Um, so we uh, yeah we give you the ability to sync with your own personal cloud. Um, and that I think that speaks to part of our culture. Like we're not building a culture around a culture or a product around holding your data hostage. Like we want you to have your data at all times. And we felt like you guys already most people already have their own cloud accounts. So that's where like when you generate reports and you want to share them with your accountant or other folks, um, it we like we leverage your own cloud. So you have your stuff. Um, and we think that that should provide a good feeling too moving forward. But you also get other pretty cool technical capabilities through those clouds. So um, thanks for pointing that out, Brenda. Oh, you're welcome. Um, OK, other questions? Is there an ability, and if not, when might there be the ability to put in monthly recurring expenses? Yeah, so that's coming. Um, if you yeah. tap on that in the app, uh, I remember that was a question during uh, um, the Tech Ambassador session at MegaCamp. And mm -hmm. when I checked uh, with um, uh, with the lady who asked, and we saw on the screen um, that it said feature coming soon. And then I went and checked with my CTO, um, you know, what's going on with that. So that's coming in a future release. And um, when I say future release, like we're not talking about like um, next year or anything like that. So it's hard to say, but I don't think it would be like more than two months. And I'm just padding that. Sometimes, like, I don't know exactly uh, the. Sometimes I say like two months, and then it comes out like tomorrow, because um, <laughs> the guys just uh, they iron stuff out pretty quickly. So that'll be uh, coming pretty soon. Like I'll say that. Like we we move really fast with stuff. We just do it in a way that makes sure everything's working properly. Absolutely. Um, can this sync up with? accounting management software like QuickBooks? 
So we, we, to be clear on that, we're not importing data from a QuickBooks. Uh, you can export data out of Hurdler, uh, Profit Dash, into, um, into uh, any accounting software if you wanted to. Um, I think the question when folks are asking, they're really looking to see if they can export from a QuickBooks and import that into Profit Dash. Um, and I'm not sure, like we can't do that right now. Um, and, but you can export out of Profit Dash, which is similar to like, you know, the cloud, uh, you know, your personal cloud syncing. Like we're not, we don't want to hold your data hostage. Um, so I hope that answers the question. It's probably not the answer that you want to hear. Um, but, uh, but it's the answer. <laughs> yeah, it is the answer. Yeah. I mean, we try to, I want to be straightforward with everything. Um, yeah. So, yeah. It's uh, yeah. not to say that we wouldn't in the future. There is, there is no plan for that in the future currently. Okay. Yeah, as opposed to like the monthly recurring expenses, which there is. Okay. Um, so now there are questions on pricing as we anticipated. So um, I've put together actually a slide. So um, maybe if you could just take a minute, Raj, just to walk through how how pricing works. Um, sure. You know what what's available right away and where where that pricing kicks in. Sounds if good. If it needs to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So I. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think we're still ironing out like the best way to communicate it. Um, I like to per personally. I like to say that it's uh, two hundred dollars a year or twenty dollars a month. Um, for folks listening, uh, the the I don't like this whole ninety nine cent stuff, but the App Store, like Apple App Store, actually requires that your price ends in ninety nine cents. It's the <laughs> craziest thing. Uh, I don't believe in that stuff, but that's what they require. Um, so, just like gas it's what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I rather when I see one ninety nine ninety nine, I think it's two hundred. Um, so um, anyway, it's uh, so it's two hundred a year or twenty a month. Um, all of the, so there is no like all of the features are 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 there. There aren't features that we turn on and off. Um, the the free part, uh, and I think this is where there is some confusion. Is you can use the app for free, all of the features. Um, and expense deduction. So this is where you start getting actual dollar savings. You can track, currently you can track up to $1,000 for free and then it'll ask you to upgrade to either the annual or monthly plan. The annual plan comes out to like $16 and something per month, but you do have to pay the 200 up front. Um, but what we've seen, we put in some Easter eggs uh, for the MegaCamp launch where when you, um, once you hit your thousand, you hit it. If you hit it pretty quickly, it'll just it'll add on another thousand. We didn't actually put a limit on it, um, uh, like a dollar limit. So because we were we were looking at, we wanted to see like what, how fast uh, how fast it went. But the model right now is it's a thousand in deductions you can track for free. And the premise behind that was because for most people that ends up being a two hundred dollars post tax savings. Um, so after taxes are taken out, um, and so that's how we came up with it. We thought because we thought, okay, that at least if you see that and you get that, then uh, you feel like, okay, I'm covered for like the first year, like, and then you can start seeing if the app provides value. Um, but that's so we're trying to make it a simple model, a transparent model, um, and but there are things like, you know, I like to say that this is the cost personally, and then. Um, here are the things that um, here's how you can try it try it for free as opposed to the other way around um, and I think in time we'll see what is the best way what is the best way to pitch it um, but I think uh, I think that's the better way like when we come out when we say like this is the price and you can try it for free um, and um, but there there are things like we don't turn off stuff so like it'll still track all of your mileage, all of your expenses, all of your commissions, listings, your, you'll get your profit share alerts. Like you'll get a monthly, when profit share comes out, you'll get a push notification that's set on your phone that this is your profit share. You don't actually have to log into your online desktop system to see what it is. So if agents are out and about, they'll get the push notification wherever they're at. It's going to be a positive feeling whenever you get that push notification wherever you're at. It's going to be nice. Um, and your tax estimation, that's always on. Um, but the limit is on the deductions. So, 
you know, we, we want to do it in a way that it doesn't create a bad experience or it says, oh, but it, you don't get, uh, you know, it's, it's limited deductions that you can track and, we're, you know, trying to figure out, well, what does the average agent track in a year? Um, so that's why I like to lead with it being just, it's 200 a year or 20 a month. And uh, it's going to, like, we're seeking to provide a minimum of a 10x return on that. So, like, you should see, like, a 2000 at least a $2,000 savings in a year. Like that's when we will feel good about what we're doing. Like that's we want to provide solid value. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think I think that really clears it up. And if anybody has further questions on that, um, feel free to send them in. Um, or I guess Raj, they can chat with with you or your team yeah, through the definitely. app. Definitely. Yep. Absolutely. We don't have any salespeople on our team. We have a, we're a team of 15 right now, and there's. Nobody in sales. We have growth folks that help help us grow, but everyone's straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, wow, we are already at 2.30. Um, Raj, thank you very much for being on the call. Um, I have just a couple more things to, to wrap up today. Um, but Raj is going to be coming back again in the future, and we are obviously in very close contact. So if you have any other questions that you uh, – want to make sure get answered, go ahead and type them in and we will either address them after the webinar immediately or we'll follow back up. Well, thanks for having me, Brenda. I really appreciate oh, you're, it. Oh, you're so welcome. Very welcome. So um, before we wrap up, just one note is that uh, this is a picture from last, well, actually this year's 2016 South by Southwest. Um, pictured is Chris Ermson. He's the director of the Google Self-Driving Car Project. But it's people like this that show up on stage at the South by Southwest Interactive Conference. Um, it is one of the biggest things that ever happens in Austin. Next year will be the 30th year, and it's where the interactive film and music industries all come together, and it just provides all these different educational tracks and experiences for attendees to find out, you know, what's coming next in, in all of those worlds. So the interactive um, segment of it is further broken down into tracks, and there's one particular track called the Intelligent Future. And so here's an example of one of the panels uh, or presentations from this year's Intelligent Future track. So for 2017, our very own Josh team has submitted a proposal to have his panel featured at South by Southwest. So whether or not you plan to attend South by Southwest, how cool would it be to be able to say that your organization um, had a panel that our CEO was featured talking about how Keller Williams plans to future-proof our agents' businesses through innovation, uh, the same message that you've been hearing at uh, Megatech and lately over the last couple of months uh, since Josh and Steve have joined. So if you want to help vote this up, then I am going to send you a link through the chat window. And all you'll do is you click on that link and you'll see the screenshot there on the left. It will have you sign in and create an account first. It just takes a minute to do and you can create an account by signing in with Facebook and then you're able to vote for um, all of the panels that you'd like to see featured. So just passing that along, and um, if you want to share that within your market centers, that would be great too. So thanks so much for your support. And finally, what we have on the agenda for webinars over the next month, you can find them, as always, on the KW Connect calendar. Just like the screenshot shows you, quick way is to filter out only KWRI Learning Center events and then put the keyword technology in the search window and then that will filter out all of our tech webinars which you see listed below. And real quick what the topics of each of them will be next Monday, Leading Edge Technology Strategies. Uh, Kevin is going to be interviewing two associates from New Hampshire to talk about how they were very su successful with social media and an 8 by 8 follow-up program to convert leads and they had some amazing uh, results in a very short amount of time. On Monday, September 12th, Systems for Success is going to feature um, 
getting ready for the shift, how, one way to do that is to get back in touch with your database. So we'll talk about uh, eEdge, again, that is our CRM. We will be partnering with market leaders through at least next summer. And so that is still the CRM for KW agents and we'll focus on just getting the most out of it as far as managing contacts and communicating to your contacts through eEdge. On the 19th, the Internet Lead Generation Series continues where we're going to be talking about consumer feedback, ratings, reviews, testimonials, um, having those on your website, how that can help generate more leads. And then on Monday the 26th, we're going to have Raj join us again. And as you know, the Monday webinars are always for the entire population of Keller Williams Associates. So we'll have a larger audience on there. And um, by that point, Profit Dash will have been in use for a little over a month. And we were, uh, we'll be looking for success stories for agents who are using that in their businesses. And anything that Raj can share with us as well, we will present on that webinar. So I'm going to wrap it up with a fun fact, um, really a question. And does anybody know how Amazon got its name in general? A to A. Yes, it does have to deal. Oh, A to Z. <laughs> That's clever. No, but I really like that. Um, so no, Amazon actually was originally going to be called Cadabra short for abracadabra because the magical experience of buying books from them um, d dictated a name like that. Um, but Jeff Bezos, the founder and CEO of Amazon, realized that people kept mishearing that as cadaver, so he needed to change it. So he went back to the drawing board and chose Amazon for two things. It's um, the Amazon River suggests a large scale and they launched with the tagline the earth's biggest bookstore in 95 and then also back in 95 the number one way most people looked on the web was using Yahoo's directory and that listed everything in alphabetical order so that's really why the company's name begins with a to put them up near the top so a little fun fact for you today that I was not aware of and now you know too all right, so if you have any further questions, I will stick around for a couple of minutes and I'll watch the questions log. Otherwise, have a wonderful weekend and we hope to see you back next week on our webinars. And once again, Raj, thank you very much for being here.